doesn't need a steering wheel or gas pedals. That's the idea with Google's new two-seater prototype. Once you get in, just buckle up and type in your destination on a smartphone app. It'll use sensors to safely avoid obstacles in the road. And if at any time there's a problem, well, there is an emergency stop button and you can reactivate your trip with a go button. It has plenty of time to judge traffic and avoid obstacles because it only travels at a max speed of 25 miles an hour. And that's safe, but it's not a practical speed limit for everyday use and it can't go on highways. So for now, you could just think of it as more of a futuristic personal shuttle to chauffeur you between buildings on a work campus or university campus. Google would like you to be able to buy one in three to six years, but there's also the issue of a little thing called laws. The few states that do allow for self-driving cars require a human behind the wheel to take over in an emergency. It may not look like a very safe car from the outside, and you are putting your life in the hands of a robot that's using Google Maps. But hey, it looks like it has a cute little face with a nose and a mouth, so that should help ease your fears. Now, you won't be able to autopilot your car anytime soon, but auto-translating a video call, well, that's another matter. Microsoft will be rolling out a real-time language translation feature on Skype by the end of the year. It's called Skype Translator. Now, there was this live demo on stage during a Recode conference where Skype quickly translated a conversation between two people speaking English and German. Is it wahr, dass du bald nach London umziehst? Is it true that you were soon moving to London? We're getting just a bit closer to a Star Trek future. Now, if only Microsoft could make a food replicator. So Google's working on taking cars to the next level, and Microsoft has the next level of video communication. But over at Samsung, it wants to improve health tracking technology. It's working on better sensors that go into wristband health trackers and a better way to collect a ton of data about your body and share it with you and doctors. They call their device the SimBan, but this is not for sale. It's for other companies to build off of. The point is maybe we can have a wristband that makes real